Chris with Go Hunt, and we're back with another gear list. I'm going to be going over all the stuff I'm taking with me on my upcoming elk hunt with trail. It's going to be about an eight day over the counter tag in Colorado, archery elk hunt. Um, completely back country. We're looking to go about 10 miles in with no plan of coming out until we shoot something. So this is probably one of the more light setups that I try packing with me. And I'm just going to jump in, go over all the gear I'm taking, why I take certain things, and all that good stuff. So, with the clothes worn, first light, my favorite piece, the Klamath hoodie. This is what I usually wear as kind of like my outer shell. Um, I don't really, I don't bring a soft shell. So, the Klamath hoodie is my go-to piece. I'll probably wear this the most out of anything. And then underneath that, I'll have the, this is just the Arrowwool Fuse. Um, for this is a later September hunt from like the 19th to the 26th So I went with the fuse over the wick just because it's a little bit thicker and a little bit warmer and late September in Colorado You can get all sorts of crazy weather. So I went with a little bit warmer piece on that base layer And underneath that I'll have the first light. This is the tech T uh, This is brand new for them, and it's It's a really nice piece just you know, if you're running around a lot in elk hunting, if you get hot, you can just wear a t-shirt, which I do quite a bit. And then for my pants, First Light, Oregon pants. These are my favorite pants from First Light. Nice and stretchy. They're the perfect thickness for kind of that September hunt. You know, not too thick, but not too thin. Super durable. Uh, I, do have a, I do have a burnt hole in there, but that's from just getting to the fire too close. But they are super durable pants. And then with those pants, I'm going to pair those with usually uh, gators. So these are the Outdoor Research Crocodile Gators. Elk country, you're going through a lot of deadfall, a lot of dew in the mornings. So just extra protection on the pants. So kind of going into my insulation layers, what I do to keep warm. Um, go on beanie for the head, keep my head warm. Wear that all the time. Right now I have two different mittens, but it's because I lost one. I lost one. And then I bought a new one that I lost another one. But so they're two different mittens, but they're the exact same. These are just insulate. I got them on Amazon, super cheap. Uh, what I like about them is I'm still able to have a function with my fingers while still being able to have a mitten. And I don't like gloves. I think gloves are dumb. They don't do anything. They keep my hands to stay cold in gloves. So why would I wear gloves? That's why I'm a mitten guy all the time. Plus you have the function with these mittens and the function so that's these are like my favorite gloves and then with that I always bring puffy pants no uh, trail trails the one that kind of introduced me to this and they're really really nice puffy pants plus I run a tarp setup so a little extra warmth here and there doesn't hurt these are the first light on the puffy pants lightweight if you're cold put on the puffy pants and then the Uncapagre 2.0 from First Light is what I'll wear for a puffy jacket. And I think clothes are one feet. Like if you're looking to cut any weight in an area, I think there's a lot of options with the clothes. I know for sure I used to bring too much clothes. And after going on a, a amount of backcountry hunts, you just realize stuff you don't wear. So I like to keep it pretty simple. If I'm cold, I have insulation layers. If I'm wet, I got my rain gear. So I don't bring a soft shell. It's just just to keep things simple and cut down on some weight here and there. And then kind of going into the rain gear, I do have the first light. These are the boundary pants, nice and lightweight. And then for the jacket, I bring the first light. This is the seat jacket, which is, a, they're a little bit more durable, a little bit thicker, heavier uh, rain jacket compared to the boundary rain jacket they have. And that's just because late September, you get all sorts of weather. Plus I don't bring a soft shell, so I can use this as my soft shell too. So those are the clothes that I'll be bringing. Almost forgot the underwear and socks. I can do Porter wrong on this one. These are Porter's favorite underwear. He recommends this to everyone, and they are really nice. These are the Saks uh, Quest underwear. Um, they have a nice hammock in here for what Porter says to hold your buddies, your hold your boys, or whatever the hell he says. <laughs> Saks underwear, and I usually just bring one pair of underwear for eight days. I don't really care. It's not like I'm hanging out with anyone too special besides the trail. And then uh, socks, these are the Darn Tough uh, 2011 socks. So I like a little more cushion for these mid-season hunts. 
just because you are walking a lot more when you're elk hunting. So I do like a little more cushion compared to an early season hunt where I like to go with a thin sock because I'm just sitting and glassing most of the time. And I will bring two pairs of socks. That's one thing I bring extra. I really like having a dry pair of socks. Uh, my feet get wet a lot. I've had those, you know, bad conditions, bad weathers, your feet get wet, and there's nothing worse than that. So I usually have a dry pair of socks with me. I go to bed, I put on the dry pair of socks, and then I wake up in the morning, and then my wet ones are dried out, so I can just keep swapping them back and forth so I know I got a good pair of socks. And the boots this year, trying out some new boots. These are the Salewa Mountain Mid Trainer GTX. Um, with my boots, I like uh, nothing too stiff. I like being lightweight, fast, but still stiff enough for you know being able to haul heavier packs, especially in elk hunting season, and being able to handle the you know the, all the crazy terrain that you come across when you're on an elk hunt. So I like that in between boot. This is a Flex Three, so it's not too not too stiff, but still stiff enough to handle. You know all sorts of side hilling and what I found with the slay was are I kind of have a thinner heel a thin foot and this this is a thinner boot and it really cups my heel really nice which is uh, something I'm looking forward to trying out and since I've worn these a little bit but that's kind of why I went with these boots I like to be light fast you know don't want I don't like heavy boots at all I don't like you know them weighing me down so I like a kind of a mid in between boot that's still able to side hill and do all that without your ankles hurting but still light at the same time. Then we'll jump into my hydration what I'll be bringing. So with that I like the Aquamere drops lightweight don't have to worry about anything pumps breaking down fill up your water seven drops of each per liter and then kind of my backup is the MSL trail shot so if I do run into some problems I do need a pump but for the most time I just like this for I keep it on the side of my pack I'm walking find a stream sitting close by I can just quick fill up my bottle and that's mostly what I use this for and I use all the drops for filling up my bladder people say there's funny taste I haven't tasted anything funny people get worried about you know being a little grime in the water it doesn't bother me any it's light cleans my water and it tastes, it tastes pretty good. And then another thing I'll bring with the hydration, and this is a, the, the Platypus 3 liter. Um, you could go with a 2 liter, but I think your best bet to go with the biggest one because when I'm by water, I want to get as much as I can. So I'm going to go with a 3 liter all the time, fill up as much as I can so I know I don't have to be worried about water as much if I can fill up more water. Now also, just this year, I'm bringing a... This is the Platypus water tank. So this is four liter. It's really lightweight. And just when you don't know where you're gonna be sometimes and what situations you're gonna run into. Cause like last year trail night in Wyoming, we had one water source in this whole entire area that we were elk hunting. And trail had one of these. So it's nice to have, you can go to this water source. You know, you're not gonna go back for a couple days, fill up as much water as possible leave this at camp, always have cooking water. It's lightweight and just kind of a peace of mind. You're not always worrying about water throughout the hunt because that's usually what will end up happening in your elk hunt. I almost forgot for my hydration, what I bring for water. Um, I don't bring an algae. Uh, I think they're, whatever, they're heavy. A big hunk of plastic. I don't know why I need an algae when I can just have a lightweight water bottle that I buy at the gas station. Plus it's cheaper, it does the same thing, it's a liter. So I don't have any problem with just bringing a water bottle in there. And if you watched our elk hunting film, my water bottle came in handy last year because we lost our bugle tube. What we did was just cut the water bottle down and we just made it a bugle tube. So there's multiple uses with just having standard plastic water bottle. Sleeping system. I feel like I have my sleeping system dialed. This is probably my best sleeping system I've ever had. I'm not gonna lie, I think it's the best sleeping system that anyone could have. Being a little biased maybe, but what I have is the Stone Glacier Sky Air ULT. I have the vestibule and the mesh in here. And the reason I have the mesh with the tarp is 
for rain mostly. So what that does is the mesh is going to sit, it's going to pull the bathtub floor up a little bit. So you know if you're in steep country and elk running around, you get rain coming under, you're still going to stay dry because the mesh is going to pull up that uh, floor for you. So that's why I like to run the mesh tarp underneath the, the sky air along with the vestibule so that kind of comes over, keeps all my gear dry. Um, it's really lightweight. And then you just have to have uh, two tracking poles with that. I don't even use tracking poles. The only reason I bring these things is for the tarp. Uh, I don't ever hike with tracking poles. I think they get in the way. That's just my personal opinion. I hike faster without them. And they're just kind of tiring on my arms. So I usually just bring these just for my tarp. So I get the lightest trekking poles I can find. And these are the Lucky Legacy Ultra Light trekking poles. And then with with my Sky Air, I'll have the Big Agnes uh, AXL. This is the regular mummy. I think this is one of the lightest sleeping pads you can find. It's insulated. I've taken this on a third season hunt in some cold, cold weather. And I haven't had any problems. Very lightweight, compact, good sleeping pad. And then last but not least, the pillow. If you don't have a pillow in your sleeping system, I highly recommend it. This thing is a couple ounces. It's a Climate XL pillow. Um, it just makes everything a lot more comfortable. I think sleep is very important in the backcountry. If you're not getting good sleep, you're not going to have a good hunt. So I try to make my sleeping system the most comfortable and lightweight at the same time as I possibly can. And all this together right here is about three pounds. So very lightweight and can handle any sort of weather. I've been rained on, snowed on, all sorts of stuff. And then obviously I have my uh, steaks that come with the Stone Glacier plus a couple extra in there. I got some uh, Hilleberg steaks that I bring just to be sure, you know, if you have some stiff ground and you break one, but you should be pretty good on that. And then the and then with that, the sleeping system, I run the Stone Glacier Chilkoot 15 degree sleeping bag. This is by far my favorite sleeping bag I've ever slept in. Uh, I used to run a quilt just because I don't like being compact. I don't like that feeling of being constricted. And the thing about this sleeping bag is it's very wide through the shoulders. So I can literally roll around. I can sleep on my side in this sleeping bag. And I have never gotten cold in this sleeping bag yet. I'll take this on third season hunts. It's a really versatile bag being that 15 degree range. It's lightweight and packs down. I usually throw this in like a compression sack. Yeah, so that's that's the sleeping bag I run. I highly recommend it. This little guy, the Thermarest ZC. Most just just a comfort thing for me. It's lightweight and it's you know if you're sitting down on the ground eating, it's nice to sit on this. Plus, I keep this uh, right outside my door of my tarp, so when I get up in the morning, you know if it's been rainy, there might be some mud. I can always have this down, keep my feet clean. You know, it's just a small thing that helps me be a little more comfortable in the back country and it hardly weighs anything, I'm gonna take it. So that's the Thermarest ZC. I'm gonna jump into my cooking system. This is brand new for me. Just got this a couple days ago. I'm trying out something new. I've been your classic jet boil guy, I run that all the time. But I know there's lightweight options and this, this setup's pretty slick. So what I have is, you know, just your standard MSR fuel canister. And what I've done is I have the seek outside. This is their uh, their bale mug. Really lightweight, titanium. You know, has different functions, which I like. You can have handles. You have this just in case you want to cook something over the fire. And then what I'll run with that is the Soto Windmaster. So this is where you're really going to start cutting weight compared to your jet boil and all that stuff that it comes with. Soto Windmaster. Have that right on there. Then I can just put my my seek outside titanium bale just right on top like that. So I've cut cut some weight on that with this setup compared to the jet boil. And it's fair and it packs really nice. Seek outside comes with this nice pouch so I can keep everything together. You have better chance of not losing something. Uh, and then throw my lighter in there. And then my uh, Sea to Summit Alpha Long Spoon. This thing is filthy dirty. Goodness gracious. I don't know what the hell I have on that thing. 
Uh, it's been sitting in my pack for a hot minute. But yeah, the just the long spoon, obviously, so I can get down to the bottom of my mountain house. Nothing too crazy about that. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this new uh, stove system I'm gonna be trying out. Just a little lightweight, a little more easy, compact, which I like. Now going into uh, kind of the optics that I'll be bringing. Elk hunt, it can really vary on what optics you're gonna be bringing. Sometimes I bring a spotter, sometimes I don't. If I know I'm going somewhere where there's not gonna be any glassing, I'm not gonna bring a spotter. I probably won't bring a tripod. So I do have them on here. Just in case, you know, if I know I'm going somewhere where I'm gonna be able to glass and that's gonna be like a way we're gonna hunt, I will bring a spotter. So this is the Razer HD spotting scope from Vortex. It is 27 to 60 by 65 millimeters. So this is the kind of a smaller, lightweight one compared to the 85. Uh, still get enough zoom and mag, especially for elk. I don't need anything too crazy. So I do like this lightweight option for, uh, for their spotters from Vortex. And then I also have my Pulling scope adapter on there. Then I put this nice little case on there. I'm trying to get better at keeping my stuff nice and not busting it around. I've been kind of known for that around the office. Uh, kind of optics falling around. I used to have just a sock over the top of it. Got that from the trail, but yeah, it's just a nice lightweight scope. I might take it, I might not. It just depends on the country I'm gonna be in. And then the tripod, this is a little bit sturdier of a tripod, a little bit heavier, there's definitely lighter options, but uh, it's really nice to glass on, it's going to be stable. So this tripod, this is the Saru T12 1204SK with the V5 head on here. It's a little more heavy, got the twist locks, but it's super stable, especially for spotting scope. Uh, might not, most likely I won't bring this with me on the elk hunt, with me in the backcountry. I mean, it really depends on if we're going to be doing a lot of glassing or not. But this is my tripod that I use for mule deer and all the other hunts. So I do keep it in my gear list. I will bring it with me. It'll be kind of a, at the trailhead decision with this tripod. Now going into my binos, what I'll be wearing on my chest. So this is the marsupial bino harness. It's the open one. And this is a large. So the reason I have a large because I run 12s for mule deer on my chest. So they can fit in the large, and then for elk I run tens. So instead of buying two marsupials, I just went with the large so I can fit both my 12s and uh, my tens in here. So there is a little room in here right now because I have my tens. These are the Vortex Razor UHD 10 by 42. Awesome binos. And then I have the wind checker. Always gotta be aware of the wind, nothing too crazy. And then with that, I have the marsupial uh, rangefinder pouch pair with that. And then the rangefinder I have is the new uh, Leupold RX full draw. So what this does is you're able to put in your arrow weight, your you know distance from your peep to your to your uh, knocking point, all that data in there. So then what it does is you're able to uh, range, and it's going to give you a line above your range if your arrow is going to hit a branch by chance. So it does all that calculation for you. So you kind of know if there's anything in the way of your arrow flight, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's, and you just, it, there's good instructions with that to show you uh, how to put all the data in there. It's nothing too crazy, your arrow weight, distance from your peep sight, some other things, and then, and then it's gonna be able to show you a line of where your arrow will hit, if there's something in the way or not. So that's my, kind of my optics I'll bring on that. And more than likely, I'll probably just be running those 10x42 UHDs on my chest the whole time and not even bring the spotting scope or the tripod. Your elk country tends to be, you know, you're in the thick timber most of the time, so I'm not, I'm not glassing too much or too far. I just need something to see if it's there. And they're big animals, so they're not too hard to see. Kind of just going into my, you know, miscellaneous gear, what I'll bring for that. Uh, this is the ultralight watertight medical kit. I did customize this a little bit, you know, putting some of my own stuff here and there. Obviously got to have electrical tape, some moleskin, that good stuff. And then I'll have all the tie-in, all PM, and all that other medical stuff you need. And one thing I will say that I have uh, started doing more often with kind of my medical kit is Advil PM or something like that. I try, I've been trying to take that like every night when I'm out in the backcountry. One, it helps me sleep better, and most of the time, 
in the backcountry and elk hunt, you're sore a lot, and you don't even realize it till the next morning. And what I've found is taking like a Tylenol PM every night in the backcountry, I'm less sore, feeling better the next morning. I'm able to hunt harder, hike harder, and I'm able to sleep better. So that's just one little tip that I have that I've kind of learned. So that's kind of my medical kit. It's nothing crazy. Um, and then with that, I have my headlamps. I always like to bring two headlamps. If I have problems with one, I've been out of luck. And then I had to use my light for my phone, which then drains my phone battery. So my headlamps, my main one I like to use is the Petzl Actic. The reason I like this one, simple settings. I hate just all sorts of crazy different settings on a headlamp. I want to turn it on and I want it to work. Simple as that. Maybe get a little brighter if I click it twice. I like a simple headlamp. It doesn't waste battery. Petzl Actic. Great headlamp. And then my backup is the Black Diamond Storm. Um, too many settings on this thing. That's why it's my backup. I click it. Sometimes it's bright. Sometimes it's not. Uh, the battery on this isn't as good. I've noticed it's because it's on so many different settings. I think it works too hard. So that's why I like the Pencil Actic. I have the Black Diamond Storm as my backup. It's still a good headlamp. If you like me, you don't mess around with a bunch of different settings and all that. You might like the storm, but me, just a simple turn on the light, let's go. So those are the two headlamps I'll bring with me. And then the Garmin InReach Mini. I love taking this thing. I'm able to Bluetooth this straight to my phone. Um, and then I'm able to text people, which is always nice. And it's just peace of mind for anyone out there, my parents, my friends. Uh, it's got a nice SOS button. So Garmin InReach Mini, they're kind of expensive, but it's well worth it and just gives you added peace of mind. Also, weather. This is gives you awesome weather. Uh, last year in our elk hunt, Trill and I, you, you're playing out your days around weather a lot of the time and out there you don't have any service. And I'm able to use this with my phone and it tells me exactly what the weather is gonna be. Uh, it's an added benefit and it helps us be more prepared for what to expect and kind of how to plan out our hunt. So that's another cool feature with the Garmin InReach that I really like. Toothbrush. Just a small travel toothbrush. Bring some extra AAA batteries for my headlamp. Extra rangefinder battery. Gotta have chapstick. You will have leather lips in the backcountry if you don't bring chapstick. It's a must. Plus if you're chafing, you can throw that on, but hope I'm not chafing with the sacks underwear. And then, um, what else I got over here? Oh yeah, just a little cloth little lens cloth from Vortex for my optics. And I bring a lot of camera gear so I can clean my cameras with this also. And then uh, my camera, this is just a Canon EOS 300 film camera with a 50, 50, 50 on it. Uh, it's really lightweight, really easy to use. I've been kind of liking the look of film and just been having some fun with the film cameras. I'll also bring uh, the Sony 7.3 with me. That's the one that's filming right now, but I'll bring that with the 24 to 105 and this film camera, a couple batteries and memory cards, and I should be good with that. What I'll do with all this stuff, this kind of miscellaneous stuff, I'll throw it in this Mr. Rancher's Zoid bag. Helps me kind of keep everything organized in one place so I know where it's at. So that's a nice little feature that I always like to bring, just a little Mr. Rancher's Zoid bag. And then uh, the charging. So what I need out of charging. Keep my phone charged because I'm using Go Hunt Maps. So um, that's my navigation is my phone. So I have to have that charged. And I have a couple options right here. So what in the past I've used is pocket juice. This is going to be your cheap option. You're probably going to have to get one every year. They're 40 bucks. They work great. They're a little bit heavy, but they honestly probably are out of like working ability and getting a lot of charges out of it. They're really nice. Not as durable. You're gonna have to buy a new one. It's not gonna last you forever. So there's that option that I've taken. What I also have is the Dark Energy. So this is gonna be a little more expensive, super durable. You're gonna get enough charges that you need. Um, a little bit lightweight, but it comes at a cost. Uh, I'd probably say for a hunt, your pocket juice, you're gonna get more charges out of. Not gonna have it forever. A little less charges going to have it forever. So those are kind of my options that I think about when I take out some battery sources to keep all my things charged if that's my Garmin InReach Mini or my phone. Now we'll go into the kill kit. 
So with the kill kit, caribou game bags, I got a hot tip for you. Do not take those whoppity game bags on your elk hunt. Here's why. I want a thin bag. I like to get a nice narrow thin bag so then that meat stays right in here. I'm gonna debone it most of the time. The thing about when you get those big elk bags, they're too wide. So I'm gonna have meat coming out on the sides of my pack. I want that meat to be straight up and down on my pack. So I prefer, this is my preference, I'm not saying I'm right. I prefer to have the long, narrow caribou game bags. It keeps all the meat in line with my pack. I'm not having anything splay out on the sides, making an uncomfortable ride. Learned that last year. So that's my kind of my hot tip on the game bags. You're better off with a long, narrow bag than having those huge white bags. My kill kit, some people give me some shit about it. I don't know why, because I carry this Bucklight Max knife, whatever, it's 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Very lightweight, I think it's like three ounces. And it's a nice fixed blade. Uh, I always like to have a fixed blade on you know, elk because they are bigger animals and you do have some tougher cuts here and there. So a fixed blade's always nice to have. Buck knife, Buck Light Max. I think it's one of their most lightweight knives that they sell for a fixed blade. And then I always have the have one, you know, knife with the interchangeable blades. Always bring you know five or six different blades with that. So I usually, all the time on all my hunts, I'm going to have a have one where I can interchange the blades out, super sharp, and I'm going to have a fixed blade of some sort, like this buck knife right here. And then. Since I am bringing a fixed blade, elk are big animals, you're cutting them up, you're gonna to need to sharpen your knife. And this is just a really small knife sharpener by Smith's. You know, really lightweight, does the job, sharpens it up, I'm able to keep cutting. Then I have my little tag holder for my tags, some paracord. You know, this can be for multi-use anywhere, from tying stuff up. Just a nice thing to have some paracord if you wanna hang your meat or had something break on you with your tent. And then a pin. I have a pin in here. Sign my tag. One thing I don't have in here that I do like to bring is some sort of uh, sheet of some sort. Um, plastic sheet, anything that you can find that's about this big that you can place the meat on once you cut it off so you can cut it up. Because it does kind of suck if you don't have that to try cutting your meat up on the ground and you're gonna have super dirty meat. So I would recommend some plastic, you know, some sort of plastic tarp. I've done it on an emergency blanket before. That's one way you can kind of multi-use. If you do get really cold, you can use the emergency blanket. I've done it just throw on some meat and, so I can cut it up and debone it. So that's another thing I usually do have in my kill kit. Um, obviously my probably threw away because it's all bloody. So I do have to get one of those. Kind of jumping over into my archery equipment. So what I got. Is the VXR 31 and a half. And then I had run the B Stinger Micro Hex. I got the 15 on the front with four ounces. And then I run a 12 off the back with what do I got back here? Six ounces. And the reason being, I like bigger stabilizers because you're obviously more stable. And one thing that does not bother me at all is having a heavy bow. I'd rather have a heavy bow and be more stable. I'm gonna, it's going to be more forgiving. I'm going to shoot better. And I will say the most important equipment you can bring on a hunt is your weapon. I don't care how heavy my weapon is. If this thing shoots straight and does exactly what I want it to do, I'll carry the heaviest weapon if it feels good to me. So I'm not worried about weight at all on my weapon. If that's gun, bow, because I do get questions like, oh, you're bringing big stabilizer out there in the elk woods doesn't bother me. I shoot better with it, so I'm gonna take it. On top of that, with my rest, I got the Hamski Trinity. What's cool about the new uh, Hamski Trinity, they actually have a, a tension that you can adjust on the spot. Whereas before, uh, like the other Hamski Pro, it's a screw that you can kind of just tighten it. So you always have to have like a screw to tighten it. And the reason I like this is because in the backcountry, you know, sometimes you don't have those tools. So if, if this does get a little loose, it's literally just a, you just pull it down and then there's a rubber band that goes over the top of it that keeps everything tight. So the Hamski Trinity, I just bought that this year and I really like that rest. I always like Hamski rest, limb driven, tough to beat. 
the sight. This is the spot hog fast eddy. This is the five five pin sight with you know the bottom pin bottom pin being a floater, so I can adjust it, move it. Uh, I like it. I do like a fixed pin for elk. So for mule deer antelope, I'm going to shoot the fast eddy XL double pin, just because I know when I want to spot and stock, I'm going to have time to adjust my pin and have the exact yardage. Whereas elk you don't know where those things are coming in at. They come running in fast, so it's always nice to just have a fixed pin I can put it on there. And I don't have a problem going back and forth between fixed pin and double pin. Some people do. I mean, once it's elk season, I start shooting this all the time, so I get used to it pretty fast, so. That's the sight. The spot hogs are a little bit heavier, but they're the most durable sight out there. I mean, I'm gonna take this on a backcountry hunt. I wanna know that this sight's never gonna move, and that's what I'm gonna get with the spot hog. That's why I really like the spot hogs over other people. And then my quiver, this is just the tight spot, five arrow quiver, nothing, nothing too crazy, holds my arrows, keeps everything nice and tight to my bow. And then the arrows I'm going to be running, these are the gold tip Pierce Platinum 300s, and then I have the four Fletch, these are the blazer boning veins. Um, I've shot all sorts of different veins, I think just do what fits you best. Out of my veins, what I'm looking for is the most forgiving vein. So, you know, sometimes you're not gonna have a perfect shot. Sometimes you might have a little torque. If I can find a vein that's gonna, you know, help take some of that air out of there, I'm gonna shoot it. And with these, uh, I found that they do do are a little bit more forgiving. And what I like about them is I'm shooting uh, the Helix, which is a fixed blade. So you do with, with the fixed blades, I like a little bit taller profile fletching. So it has a little more guidance to fly. And those are the broadheads, the Hick Helix, just a single bevel broadhead. Uh, I shot my elk with this last year. These things fly great, that's why I like them. They fly great. If I like my field points, I don't have to retune my bow. And that's what I'm looking for. And a lot of people do have problems with you know, fixed blade flight. And a lot of the time it's your bow that's not tuned or you're torquing it. So these ones seem to be the best. And, uh, with my fletchings, I do a, just a slight offset. I'm not a big helical guy. Uh, I think you do get some parachute with it when you shoot farther ranges. And out west, you don't know how far you're going to shoot, so I just do a slight offset. You know, no, nothing too crazy on that. Also, with my bow, I shoot right off the riser. The VXR is really nice right off the riser. The rounded edges, you know, you get a better consistent grip all the time. Nice, small, flat edge. Uh, so I do shoot right off the riser. I may put a little tape on there just because, you know, as it gets later in the season, you can't get colder temperatures, so it does get a little bit cold, but you're just going to have to suck it up, right? And my D-loop. Everyone asks me about my damn D-loop. I like a longer D-loop, one, because there's less torque on the string, I feel, because I am using a handheld release, so as that, as that release twists in my hand, there's going to be less twist and torque on that string giving me better flight. I also prefer a little bit longer because I feel I can get a better consistent anchor. I have a nice anchor spot right here that I like and the way I can get that is with a little bit longer D-loop and I have a better angle with my eye and string. So that's the reason why I like a D-loop a little bit longer. I mean it's all about consistency and being able to do the same thing and what's comfortable for you. And that's what I found that works best for me, and that's why I have a long D-loop. So I'm sick of hearing you guys giving me shit about it. The release. I use the Wise Choice by Carter. Great release. Um, what I found about these, I've been shooting kind of these handheld releases for a long time now. When I was little, I had a lot of problems. You get nervous a lot when you shoot your bow, especially at animals. With those index fingers, you can tend to punch a lot. With these, less chance of punching, you're gonna be more consistent, you're gonna shoot better. And I would recommend to any archer, if you have not shot a handheld release of some sort, I would give it a try. Because I I am almost guarantee you you'll shoot better with these. That's just my opinion. Now with my pack. So the pack I'm gonna be taking, since this is gonna be a full L backcountry hunt going in there pretty deep. I'm going to be taking the Stone Glacier. This is the Sky Archer 6400. Stone Glacier is just, it's a great pack, tough to beat, lightweight, 
super comfortable. You know, not, if you like a simple pack, simplicity and lightweight Stone Glacier, that's, that's their stuff. So, can't complain about this pack. I used to run the 5900. I think I just want a couple extra, just some extra cubic inches with the 6400 is why I'm taking that for this hunt. Gonna have a little bit more stuff than usual, so. And if I wanted to, I could take off the lid and run that without the lid on there. If I wanted to go kind of more of a biggie style. So that's everything I'm gonna be taking with me on my September, late September archery elk over the counter in the back country with my homie trail. This is what I'm gonna be taking on that hunt. If you guys have any questions about the gear I'm taking, if you guys have any comments, drop them in the comment section below. I'll get back to you about that. And always like, subscribe to these videos so it helps us do more of these. And thanks for watching and good luck this year in the elk woods.